Okay, Google DeepMind co-founder Demis Asabis there on AI software breakthroughs in bio research and what it could mean for the pharmaceutical industry, on which we bring in, of course, our expert Sam Fazelli in-house from Bloomberg Intelligence, on what this actually could mean in terms of AI-developed and AI-generated drugs. Sam, given what you've heard from Demis Asabis there, he thinks, and this is what really surprised me, was the time frame he gave when I asked him, when do you think the first AI-developed drug will come through? And he said, one to two years. And then he said, isomorphic labs, which sits under the Alphabet family, which is specifically focused on that job, could work, be worth in the hundreds of billions of US dollars. Is that, is that time frame, let's start there, is the time frame realistic, Sam? Well, so first of all, I have to say, you've just talked to one of the luminaries in the space. So, you know, he is absolutely on top of everything that you've just been talking about. The reality is slightly different though, because any drug that's discovered by any method, be it an AI system or a human neural network, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, they can scale much more than, than putting 5,000 humans doing the same job. Um, it's gonna to have to go through the rigor of testing, preclinical testing, and getting to the clinical trials, which can take anything from five to 10 years, depending on what sort of disease you're trying to treat. If you're cancer, you haven't got another choice, you go early, you treat a whole group, a smaller group of people, you can get through quicker. So a lot of it depends on that. He did say something very important, of course, that if the AI system is able to identify drugs that have less risk of failure, so that when you put them in the mice or in the monkeys or in whatever model you have to do before you're allowed to put into humans, and they, there's no untoward effect, faster and more likelihood of getting through it, then you increase your probability of success. If you go into the first human, usually healthy volunteers, and nothing happens, and you go to the patients, that's where you've got the, the win. That's where a lot of drugs keep failing. And of course, your prediction of whether it's gonna work or not yeah. is another element. This is all predictive, and this is modeling. Mm. How much does the system not understand about cell biology, cell chemistry, and when it doesn't understand something, how does it deal with? Because in theory, you could just design entire drugs, test them on humans, all within the computer, but I'm assuming that there are bits that we don't know, which is why we're gonna to continue to test on humans. You mean the famous unknown unknowns? Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get wrong spelled about it. Yeah. Yes. Now, so, the, 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 there's two, I, I would answer that in two ways. One is, if you don't know, you just don't know. If there's no biology deciphered on it, you won't know. But there must be structures uh, within the cell that the system cannot understand. If no one's ever looked at them, although it, it has got predictive capability, which is, I think, what's fascinating yes, here. Sure. What is more interesting for me is that there is such a massive body of science. If I showed you how many papers are published on a single day from scientists across the world sharing their information and data, and how you synthesize that information, and People like you and I have biases. Hopefully the AI system doesn't have biases. I'm an immunologist. I'm gonna keep looking at stuff related to immunology. What if there's an important piece of information that came out of some genomics somewhere that I haven't connected with because it's not my forte? The machine doesn't care about that. It looks at the information and tries to find missing links and putting links together. That's where I think the real power of this is in that massive data analysis. Okay, so in drug development, clearly some really exciting opportunities ahead. Sam, I was speaking earlier this week and we played a clip of it earlier to the CEO of Gavi and you know this is all about vaccine distribution and the vaccine alliance and uh, she was talking to us about last mile distribution and how AI could pay, play a really important role there she was saying that you can take jobs that previously would take months to work out how you do that last mile distribution of those vaccines and you can do it in seconds using actually AI technologies that already exist so in some parts of the world AI and health can already be coming together this isn't something that takes two years this is something that might deliver real results soon Absolutely. I mean, if you want to take it much broader than drug discovery, every aspect of the pharmaceutical product development chain from going into clinical trials, writing grant, uh, applications to the FDA, uh, organizing clinical trials, running them, capturing the data, analyzing it fast and real time, every single one of them, then supply chain, manufacturing, everything can be touched by that. Mm. Sam, across the pharmaceutical companies you look at, how seriously are they taking mm. this AI question? To what extent are they embedding it into their systems? To what extent is DeepMind and companies like Alphabet a threat or a partner to them? You know, I think to last, answer your question, last question first, mm. they are not a threat. These guys, pharma companies are all over anyone who can give them a new drug. And if that looks like, you know, M&A, licensing, whatever. So which is what already um, uh, Isomorphic has done. 
couple of deals. Yes. He mentioned Innovatis and I think Eli Lilly. Lilly. Yeah. So that's not a problem. They love that. The question is, inside, how are they applying this? I don't think there's a single pharma company that isn't or hasn't looked at this. And let's not forget, it's not just about AI. It's about machine learning. It's about um, just being able to have good digital systems where people can talk to each other, for example. You know, one of our successes is obviously the Bloomberg chat. Yeah. And so, you know, those kind of systems within pharma companies, allowing the analysis of data as soon as it appears in one place in Raleigh, New Jersey, being accessible to people based in uh, Stevenage, for instance, those are already happening. Raleigh, New Jersey and Stevenage. It's not a connection you those are the two. <laughs> those are the two hotbeds of, uh, I think, pharma companies. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> or near Stevenage. Okay. Yeah. In, in the environs of Stevenage. Uh, Sam, great stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Sam Fazelli from Blooming Intelligence.